So um, I am so happy to be here and have a chance to talk to all of you people who have been kind enough to join me this evening. I really want to thank Alyssa at Oil Life. I want to thank everybody at Oil Life. Um, Cynthia has been a doll to work with. I've been I've been having my product with the Oil Life company since 2020. I don't believe they grabbed the 2019 book, but it was a it was a brand new book, and um, so I can't say that I <laughs> blame anybody. For not grabbing it then but oil life has been super 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 good to work with and i just want to thank them so for those of you who are new to tam i am tam and tam i am i am an artist an alchemist and an astro junkie i want to explain these three really really briefly as an artist i'm actually mostly an illustrator i like to say i do fine art and fun art the fun art is illustration that you will see inside my book and the artist in me, I do some fine art. I do acrylic painting and some watercolor and, and that's the artist in me. Um, alchemy is another word for transformation. And I have been doing professional life and business coaching since 2012. I'm very proud of it. I've helped hundreds of people. I love coaching, especially small business. That's kind of where I'm leaning now. If you are if you consider yourself like a spiritual entrepreneur, getting a business off the ground, even an oil-based business, like I love growing business because there's an emotional transformation that needs to happen in order for you to be the best business owner possible. I see that every week inside of my business, watch the business owner cry. We do our work together. And the next thing you know, they have momentum and it's crazy great. I just love that. Um, astro junkie. So yeah, I, I am an astrology junkie. I am not a master astrologer. I want to say that out loud. I am not a master astrologer. I am an, a student of astrology who is a very good student. I pay attention. I read a lot. I study a lot enough so that I could write a book called energy almanac. And I have been doing this for five years, as I mentioned, in the upper left corner, you'll see the blue book with stars on it. That was a book that was born in six months time, but to be completely transparent, the book was born on May 4th. So may the fourth be with you, right? <laughs> it was downloaded by a psychic medium and delivered to me verbally over a 90 minute period. I took crazy notes, cried my head off and complained for 10 weeks straight until I had enough clarity and enough gumption to say, okay, if this is what God wants, then I'm going to do it. So in 2019, that first book with the, with the stars on it, I sold 420 books. And then in 2020, um, the essential oil writer, Darla, excuse me, Starla said to me, we really need to get your book to the doTERRA convention. And she hooked me up with some people in Utah. Next thing I know, I was traveling over there for the doTERRA convention and they were selling my book as a, a, in their retail online store. So that was exciting. Uh, and then 2021, 2022 is the book we're in with the teacup on it. Um, for those of you who don't have that book, um, the main theme of 2022 is about being neutral. It's about making tea, not war. And that's a really, really important uh, bit of information for you to remember. If you're taking notes in tonight's presentation, please remember, make tea, not war war there's only eight more weeks of this year and it's going to be important as we roll through november's trials and tribulations that you remember that we are one and it's so important that we not be so willing to show up angry and the fifth year book is right here on the right hand side of this photo and here is the brand new energy almanac that i am so excited to share with you. I want you to know that it is available at oillife.com. I'll share the link later in this presentation. As I mentioned, the Energy Almanac is available. There's also something else that, else that is available to you that I was asked to make this announcement. 
And I want you all to know that the Essential Life 8th edition is now available. Make sure you make your order and get that book, okay? Essential Life, I know, is an important book for all of you oil lovers, okay? All right. Um, very good. I'm going to keep moving on. Why astrology? Why TAM? Okay, so <laughs> why astrology? First, let's talk about why astrology. I want you to understand that <clears throat> astrology is the blueprint for your soul. Well, Tam, how do you know that? Like, that kind of doesn't make sense. It's been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, first discovered over in the East in, in um, China, and later was used by Romans and then brought forth uh, into modern day time. A, um, the Greek word psyche is another word for soul. Like, Alyssa, if you can write that down, psyche, P-S-Y-C-H-E, is Greek for the word soul. And planets are uh, luminaries. They, they shine an energy down upon our planet Earth. And the energy that is produced by these planets affect our psyches. They affect us at a soul level. When you have a natal astrology reading, you are having a soul reading. It is, it is how you are wired. In, an, in a natal astrology reading, you can learn what are my opportunities what does my soul want me to heal in this lifetime? What are my limitations, boundaries? How will I behave inside of relationships? How will I behave inside of community? What is a good career choice for me? All of those answers can be found inside of your natal chart if you have a great reading. And if you have it done by a reader who, is, who can speak layman's terms, and I think that is key. So layman's terms for astrology. So why astrology? Why Tam? I want you to know that my gift, my soul, my blueprint indicated I was meant for this. I had no idea that I was wired to be in publishing and to be in teaching and to give my skill of simplifying information to the masses. I have an innate gift of being able to take big concepts and boil them down and share them. I have a gift with communication. I am an artist and an illustrator. I know how to simplify information. So why astrology? Why Tam? I think I've answered that question. So I think why you're here tonight is not about me and... I hope it's about the energy almanac, but I'm guessing you really, really want to know what's going to go on with 2023. So I'm going to share that with you right now. And I always love to start with the numerology. So numerology is the study of numbers and the vibration or the energy. Remember, it's the energy almanac. Um, numbers are a vibration and they all have a special meaning. Each vibration is different. It might be um, long, short, short. It might be short, 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 long. You know, just like Morse code, each number has its own unique flavor, if you will. So let's look at the number 2023 and break it down. And we start with being in the 21st century. And the number 21 is all about truth telling. We are in the 21st century of our history, and we are going to have a whole lot of truth telling happening. And that's just something you can watch for. Make sure if you're taking notes that you remember that part of it. For the, for the rest of your life, there is a truth telling that is going to be happening. Now, what about the 2000s? The number two in and of itself is the number of, it's, the coming together it's it's about peace it's about two two individuals coming together as one so it's two ideas it's dichotomy it is can be polarity but it's the peaceful coming together of two people so 
the after that number two, you can see that there are three, see if I can do that right here. There are um, three zeros that follow that two. And those zeros always represent consciousness or the light of God. So you see that number two and three zeros, and you know that there is a lot of um, powerful God energy coming to our planet, vibrating on the planet toward peace. You may not feel it all the time, but that's the ultimate vibration that is available to us if we want to tap into it. And then we have that number 23, which is the Royal Lion of Regulus. It's a number of courage. Courage. Now we take two, whoop, let's move along. Let's do it this way. Two plus zero plus two plus three is the number seven. And what does the number seven bring us but the lightning bolt of inspiration coming down from heaven. Look at the way the number seven is formed. It's It looks just like a lightning bolt. It represents a column of light coming down into us through our crown chakra, coming into our heart where it can land and then go right down into earth where we can ground the idea in. The number seven and the three key words that I have selected for 2023 are isolation, introspection, and inspiration. The number seven is really about spirituality and God energy. And I want to go one step further, where it is right there, and let you know that that number seven really represents silence and solitude. In 2023, one of your key tools is silence, is meditation, introspection, because you can expect just like, I'll go back here, just like in this image here, you can expect those lightning bolts of sudden inspiration. You can expect to get downloaded. And this image here that you're looking at really represents another aspect of the number seven, and that is nature. In 2023, nature is your refuge. Do your meditation outside. Take your shoes off and walk in the grass or in the sand or in the water. Nature is represented by the number seven. I also want to remind everyone that there was a certain day that God rested on. It was the seventh day. <laughs> so seven really does have that very deeply spiritual flavor and it's going to be available to everybody and you're going to feel it. If you're finding yourself feeling out of control next year, Go back to your, your solitude, your isolation, get silent because the answers are going to come from within. I expect many people are going to have their very own spiritual awakening in 2023. If this is resonating for you, if you're understanding what I'm saying, please make a note in the chat box so that I don't feel like I'm just talking to my computer screen. That would be great. <laughs> All right, so come on, computer. There we go. What about the astrology, Tam? Yeah, what about the astrology? What is 2023 going to do through the planets? I'm waiting for my computer to catch up. All right, and we're going to start with what's known as the thank you this is great. This is great. Two pages of notes. Go, Judy. You're my kind of girl. <laughs> Angela, Natalie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're going to start with the big outer planets. And the outer planets are the ones that are further away. And I say big, they're not all big. Some of them are small, like Pluto is not huge, 
but he's mighty. Um, the outer planets are the ones that are further away from us and they have a much slower rotation to get around the zodiac signs. So we're going to start with Pluto's shift into Aquarius. So first let's talk about the screen a little bit. Like, um, Tam, what the heck is that little monster thing on the side, but next to the word Pluto? That little guy, I hope he looks a little bit reminiscent of, and you guys could type it in the chat if you can see what that is. Maybe I should give you a second to do that. Who is that little guy back there? Can anybody tell me? Somebody make a guess. Pluto has been, while I'm waiting for you guys to guess, somebody's going to get it in the chat box. I know. Just think, who does he look like? Oh, Wiley Coyote, Tasmanian Devil. Yes, yes. Thank you for getting the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> Perfect. Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn. So Pluto is the planet that is about um, transformation, regeneration. Pluto is the Tasmanian devil of planets. So he comes in like a tornado. He lands, he messes things up. There's a pile of rubble. And then he's like, zing, zing, zing. I'm going to go into the next sign and do the same thing. So Pluto destroys and creates like a full transformation, whatever zodiac sign he's in. He has been inside the sign of Capricorn for the last 20 plus years. That's how long it takes Pluto to go through one zodiac sign. And this year, 2022, he's in that 29th degree of the, of the zodiac. And the 29th degree is the karmic degree. It means we are collectively learning lessons right now that are Capricornian in nature. So some of you on this call are actually Capricorns. If you are a Capricorn, please use the chat box and type in, what does it mean to be a Capricorn? I'm going to talk about it, but you give me your opinion right there in the chat box. Capricorn really, when you think about uh, mundane astrology that affects the world, Capricorn represents government and big business. It represents anything institutional like healthcare, education, the government, Walmart, uh, Home Depot, Costco, big, big institutions are what are being changed. Have you felt like the government is changing? Healthcare has shifted. Have you noticed that things have been falling apart at the seams? Uh, moon and Capricorn, independence and courage. Yeah. Um, Capricorn is about independence. It's about solitude, sternness, discipline, right timing. Those are all very Capricornian. Pluto has been addressing timing. Pluto has, uh, Pluto in Capricorn. Capricorn has had us looking at the timing of things. It has had us in solitude. So Pluto is moving out of that area and beginning in March of 2023, it will shift into the sign of Aquarius. And if you are an Aquarius, please feel free to make your note in the chat box. Aquarius is about groups of people. Pluto is going to transform and make changes in the way we behave as a group. Humanitarianism is about to change, start to change. I'm just going to say start to change. It is going to take some time for Pluto to gain momentum inside of Aquarius. It could take, it might take two years before we really truly feel it, but it is an important shift that's about to happen. Aquarius is about inspiration and innovation. Pluto is going to change how we innovate. It is going to change how we look at in our intuition. Aquarius rules AI. Pluto is going to change how we look at and feel about AI. And Aquarius, more than anything, is about freedom. Aquarius, by the way, if you're an Aquarius, congratulations to you. You're so friendly. I have a daughter who's an Aquarius and Aquarius is an extremely friendly sign. They just want to please people. But more than anything, they want their freedom. Don't tell me how I'm going to be. <laughs> That's very, very 
Aquarius. Pluto is going to change and transform how we look at and work with our freedom. Isn't that exciting? I love that part. And it, like I said, I, I do want you to remember, this isn't going to like, oh, it's happening in March. We're going to feel it in April. No, no, no. It will go into zero degrees of Aquarius in March. And it might not even make it to that initiating first degree until the following February or March. It'll take that long before we really truly feel the depth of this transit, but it is exciting that it's going to start next year. I made a note down here that this is on your energy. When you get your new energy almanac, it'll be on page 10 and you can read about this transit if, if you don't have enough information from what I'm telling you now. Second planet that I wanna talk about is what we call a societal planet called Saturn. Saturn, if you see the little guy in the in the corner up there, that is like I call him the grandpa of um, of the of the planets. This luminary is very serious. Saturn normally rules the sign of Capricorn, so he's very very serious. He's extremely disciplined, and he loves form and structure. You can see he has a clipboard. He is managing things extremely well. He even is wearing a timepiece indicating proper timing. Saturn is about karmic lessons as well. So Saturn is currently ruling Aquarius, currently ruling groups of people and applying pressure to groups of people. If you think about the boundaries and limitations we've experienced for two years in the form of lockdowns and mask wearing and please work from home. That's Saturn being inside of Aquarius. That's exactly what it was going to do. That's the nature of Saturn. Gratefully, Saturn is going to leave groups of people and start moving into the area of Pisces, which is all about spirituality. You'll notice that I put an artist's smock over there in the right-hand corner and a paintbrush and sort of like the dreaming bubble or the imagination type bubble overhead. If you could imagine Saturn, I wonder if I can do that right now. If you can imagine Saturn wearing that dress like that over there, now you will understand how kind of itchy and scratchy that might feel. Saturn is very serious. Pisces is very fluffy. Pisces is all about um, dreaming and Pisces is all about unconditional love, very much about unconditional love and deep, deep emotion. Pisces can get lost in imagination and visioning and Pisces rules the artist. So creating and visioning your life into creation, Saturn is going to give us as a society Im immense lessons in spirituality and creativity, compassion, and how about martyrdom? Saturn is going to teach us about martyrdom and letting go of the idea that, well, I gave up everything for everybody. Saturn wants us to learn not to do that because that is a Piscean trait. And I apologize if you are a Pisces, but I'm just <laughs> sharing what I know. Don't take anything personally. Martyrdom is something that Pisces people tend to need to work on. So Saturn shift into Pisces will be felt in 2023, we will start to feel this. This is going to happen in also March. So I'm going to say by April and May, we are going to start to feel that, oh, that shift that it's going to be maybe a little more attention to our spiritual, spiritual practices. Saturn wants us to be disciplined, meditate daily, do it. It's good for you. <laughs> Saturn is going to say, are you a creative and you like singing? Then do your singing and do your singing every day at the same time so that you can become better at it because that's what you want, right? Saturn is going to say, hey, you wanted a new life. Use your visioning skills. You know how to do that. Go do that and do that every day. It's good for you. <laughs> Saturn wants to give us lessons about timing and, and to recognize karmic lessons in this area. Uh, it's a really important shift that is going to help us 
particularly because if you remember, it's a seven year. And what is seven about? It was in the chat box. Seven is about introspection, isolation, solitude, silence, nature, spiritual awakening. So Saturn is going to let us borrow its energy and apply it to our spirituality. Can you see the flavor that is building into 2023? Please do me a favor and drop in the chat your thoughts about all of this information that I'm delivering. I'd love to hear what you're thinking right now. And while I do that, I'm going to move on. While you do that, I will move on and talk about the second um, societal planet that is going to be affecting us. And this is Jupiter shifting into Taurus. So Jupiter is this little girl over here. She's what I call the cosmic cheerleader. <laughs> She's like, yay, here I am. Let's hear it louder. Let's make it bigger. She's the cosmic cheerleader coming in to expand things, to bring us hope and a sense of abundance. So what, wherever Jupiter is, it magnifies. Jupiter, today, as I'm delivering this uh, workshop for you, Jupiter today is in the sign of Pisces. What is Pisces? We just talked about it. Spirituality and creativity. If you've been feeling the, the urge to pray more, meditate more, be out in nature more often, it's no surprise. Jupiter is expanding that for all of us. I know that as an artist, like I said to one of my business besties today, like I can't stop with all the creative ideas. They're just flowing through me so fast that all I do is like just keep writing sticky notes and putting them everywhere, hoping that I'll get to those creative ideas because they're flowing in like mad. Well, Jupiter in Pisces is expanding our spirituality until May of next year when Jupiter makes a very, very key shift. And this is very, very exciting for a lot of people, for everybody. To me, this is like planetarily exciting and important. Jupiter is going to go into the sign of Taurus. And you'll notice I have it highlighted here in the little purple box. Taurus is the sign of uh, stability. Uh, they are dependable. Taurus is all about nature, by the way. Jupiter, uh, excuse me, Jupiter Taurus is all about nesting. It's your, it's your home life. It's beauty. It's being tactile, loving to touch things. Taurus, more than anything, is about money and resources, as well as values. So Jupiter is going to shift how we do money. Jupiter is going to shift and expand our resources. Ex our resources include our money. Our resources include our food, Our re especially food. Taurus is all about food. Uh, Jupiter is going to expand our values. In May next year, when Jupiter goes into Taurus, you might start to feel that urge to do an inventory of your personal values. Who am I? How am I wired? What really, really, really matters to me? Know those things because Jupiter is going to expand that and you want to do yourself a favor. The coach in me is starting to come out. Always, always live your life through your value system. Meaning if you get asked a question, if you get asked to do something and participate in something, you always say, is it in alignment with my value system? Not will I like it and have fun. It's is it in alignment with my value system? Okay. Jupiter is going to shift into Taurus and expand, stabilize. I'm going to say that, stabilize our resources and magnify them. So yeehaw, read, excuse me, read more about that on page 11 inside of your energy almanac. And I while I'm thinking about this, I, I don't know what even made me think about this right now, but like, I want to remind you that a good use of your resources, your money, um, is like stock up on your essential oils. Taurus, um, Taurus is really about 
having the things they need. They're extremely tactile. Use your resources to get all the things that you need to feel secure. That is a very Jupiter and Taurus thing to do. So things like um, having enough of those little spray bottles that you would use to spray your essential oil, like have them on hand or like a wood, one of those wood storage boxes that you pick up at Oil Life that you, you stack your bottles in, have that ready. Wood is a very Taurus feeling thing because it's built of, of nature. Uh, whoops, I advanced and I didn't mean to. So make sure that you use your resources wisely, go to Oil Life, get the things that you need to make your business and your life feel super secure. Read more about Jupiter and Taurus on page 11 of the Almanac. I'm just gonna check the chat real quick. Uh, big changes are needed. This brings me hope for the good things to come. Angela, absolutely, please feel hopeful. You have no reason not to. And I, I promise it's, it's good. Natalie's excited for the change. Um, so much inspiration being downloaded. It makes sense. Yes, Sandy, Dr. Sandy Martin. Yes, absolutely. The inspiration is coming hard and fast. Jupiter is just bringing it to us, really bringing it to us. And Judy, I'm glad if you're feeling inspired for 2023, you should feel inspired now and know that you're going to be receiving inspiration as we move into the new year. I am not going to say it's going to be an easy I want you to know that like, this is the little caveat, like you're going to still have bumps and bruises, of course. But one of my favorite reminders to all of my coaching clients is everything is unfolding to benefit us. And that's the truth. And these planetary aspects that are happening, that is the truth, okay? Um, I see that uh, Alyssa has dropped in the spray bottles link into the chat. Thank you for doing that. I was looking at those before I got on because I really actually need some. I've, I broke one this week, <laughs> so I need to go get one of them. And the other thing, by the way, is speaking of oil life, and Alyssa, I'm going to put you on your toes here for a minute. Um, the moon lamp. I really hope oil life is going to get the the oil lamp atomizer for essential oil back in stock because I really want one of those. And I hope everybody will take a look at the, at that cutie little atomizer. Okay. This is the next important thing that I have to talk about for 2023. So lunar nodes are an important undercurrent of every single year of our lives. And probably most people don't understand the nodes and what's going on, but I would like you to think of them as an undercurrent. So currently our nodes are in our, our North node is currently in Taurus. Our South node is currently in the sign of Scorpio. So the North node is always the destiny or the direction that we're going. The South node always represents our past. Currently our destiny is that we are learning Taurian ideals. So what does that mean? Taurian ideals. We're learning how to stabilize our money. We are learning how to be dependable. We are learning how to shift with grace. You know that Taurus is known for being stubborn, right? <laughs> we are learning how to manage money differently. Have you noticed inflation? I'm, I mean, it, that's a crazy question. I know that. Um, Taurus is teaching us about money and our value systems. That's another thing that is on people's minds is that, I mean, you just have to look geopolitically. I guess I won't talk about those topics, but geopolitically, you can look. One, some groups of people value this idea about freedom. Some groups of people value that idea about government. There's just so much going on and it's all about value system. Excuse me, I have to cough. <clears throat> <clears throat> And the south node being lessons, <clears throat> currently we're in the sign of Scorpio. So this is asking us to release, let go, learn from our past about all things Scorpio. And these include things like not being willing to transform, not being willing to change. Scorpio is all about death. 
it's all about the death of ourselves and the rebirth of ourselves. So how we look at transformation, how we do joint money, because because Scorpio rules joint finances. So joint finances includes things like how we do debt, taking loans from banks or sharing money inside of a partnership of any kind. Um, <clears throat> South node in Scorpio could be all about stopping or ending over-sexualizing our society. If, if you think our society is over-sexualized, <clears throat> these are some of the undercurrents that are going on in society. Please let me know if you feel or notice any of these things that I'm talking about. It'll be very helpful to see what you're thinking. Exciting to know that next year in July, the two nodes are going to shift and we're going to feel these flavors coming out. The North node is going to go into the sign of Aries right here. I will highlight it. It's the Ram. That Ram represents bold, dynamic leadership. If you are an Aries, please feel free to comment in the chat box right here. Um, <clears throat> the North Node is asking us to step in and step up and be bold and take action. Aries is all about taking action. It's about taking initiative. And we're going to need to do that. If we're a planet working toward transformation, working toward peace and Il Ilona, I believe you pronounce it like that. Um, tell us about Aries. Tell us what you love about being an Aries. I want to hear that. Um, <clears throat> so that will be the north side. So the opposite of Aries is Libra. By the way, the two nodes are always the two signs that are opposite one another on the ecliptic. Now, the opposite of Aries is Libra. So we are going to be learning karmic lessons about not being quite so passive. A lot of people have sat back and just said, I'll let that work itself out. I'll just, uh, I'll just, I'll just keep the peace and, and not say what I really feel about this. Libra rules the legal system, the courts, the judges, the attorneys. <clears throat> we are going to have to make some legal corrections. They were some some stuff that's happened in our past, some, some lessons we need to learn from the way our court systems have worked. And that's going to shake out this South Node in Libra, North Node in Aries. This is going to shake out over the next 18 months, beginning in July of 2023. The nodes last for about um, 18 months. Oh my God, I have to speed up, you guys, because it's quarter of nine. I'm so bummed out. Action, bold, feisty, definitely a fire sign. Alona, good for you. That's awesome. And that's so very Aries. Bold, feisty, and fiery. All about action. That's great. All right. So all of that information is inside of the Energy Almanac. And what else, Tam? What else is inside of the Energy Almanac? <clears throat> and look at all these slides. I'm going to have to really hurry. All right. Resources, resources, resources. The arrows that you see are pointing to the essential oils. This year's essential oils section was written by a woman named Jess Laurie. Jess is a doTERRA representative who has um, a great deal, a great wealth of information <clears throat> about oils and their use. And she was great enough to write for the book this year. I'm very excited. Um, that I think I did that backwards. Oh, no, I didn't. All right. <clears throat> Whoops. Here we go. <laughs> she wrote, she picked an oil for the month relative to the energy. And then she wrote like a little ritual or something that you can do. She gave us an affirmation and then suggested sometimes up to four other essential oils that you can pair with that number one oil. So you have anywhere from one to four oils per month to use based on the energy that's going to play out. How, thank, Karen Joy, thank you. I'm glad you love this. Whether it's the oils or the astrology, I'm happy you love it. Now, 
if I get an energy almanac, what am I going to do with it? It's great to know that there are oils in there, but what do I do with my almanac? I tell this to oil people all the time. Geez, Louise, use it all you can. Hold a monthly class. If you're bored with like, I don't know what to do with all my oils. I don't know how to get new customers. Take your almanac and develop a class based on what Jess Lori wrote for us inside of the almanac. That's what it's for. Um, you're going to have three or four oils. You can have the ritual. You can just keep telling people, come back. I'll see you next month. And, you know, you run the class for, I don't know what you charge, $10, $15 for them to show up. You can do what I'm doing. You can talk about the oils. You can do it in person. Please use our information for your business. And also, if you are a team leader, you have people under you, I highly encourage everybody to order all the oils. Get your energy almanac, go through the entire book and make a list of all the oils <clears throat> and then go order them. Use your points, use your discount, go order all at least 12 of them to have on hand. And then every month when you're, oh yeah, this month is going to be, for example, I think November's is Magnolia. You have that oil on hand, you're ready to go. You start showing that, hey, the Energy Almanac said we should use Magnolia this month. And you're just sharing the heck out of your little Magnolia, Magnolia oil and getting people interested in how to use that oil. It's a way to sell more oils. And by the way, use one of the Oil Life, um, oh, the little... I'm going to trick you again, Alyssa, because I'm remembering some of the products right now. Um, one of those little, uh, I think it's like a clip on that you can carry in your purse. You can have the oil of your of the month with you in that little clip on that you carry with your your duffel bag or your purse. OK, yes. Is it sorry, just like the little cover that you can like put the roller in or just yes, like oil? that's it yes 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 thank you I didn't have the right language I'm sorry I'm tricking you tonight no you're perfect I love it <laughs> <laughs> great other resources that are inside of the energy almanac are are some of these things we always always offer you keywords and themes the moon rituals for 2023 are going to knock your socks off I have a new writer for the moons and she did a fabulous job. There's journaling space in the moon ritual pages. I offer you which plants, not I, I didn't do that writing. There are plants, two per month. Every zodiac sign of the month, there's a suggested plant. And some of those plants will be relative to an essential oil as well. So be watching for that. Um, we have the shadow and the gift of the week. So every week, there's something in your psyche, or let's say it like this, there's something in your soul that you can actually feel energetically. And so that shadow and that gift that's kind of rumbling in your soul is going to be described for you in the book. There's numerology for the month, two gemstones a month selected by our expert, and then an amazing series of articles called Food Finances and Family that are going to guide you in decision-making in those areas. I am so proud of the 2023 book. It has been such a joy to build. The collaborators are exceptional. Um, before I, like, I'm literally getting ready to wrap this up in the next two or three minutes. So pr please prepare your questions. Um, I want to mention that, you know, we talked about why astrology and what is astrology and it being about your psyche and your soul print. I highly, highly recommend everybody get their natal chart read. That is your birth chart read so that you know how you are wired and who should do that reading. Drum roll, please. It's not me. I do do readings, but who you should get your reading from is Janet Hickox, H-I-C-K-O-X, of Living Astrology, living-astrology.com. I am very proud that Living Astrology has sponsored the Energy Almanac <clears throat> for 2023. Her work is remarkable. She has been writing for this book 
for four, uh, for four out of the five years, she does all the shadow work and the gift work. She's an incredibly talented master astrologer and quantum human design reader. So please, living-astrology.com would be where you would get that natal chart reading. I'm going to go a little bit further over here. I want you to please, if you are an Instagram junkie like a lot of us, please follow me at, on Instagram at, at the energy almanac. I would love you to know that it is my goal. I have just a small goal. It's not a big deal. I only want to touch a million people in my lifetime. If you will follow at the energy almanac, if you will comment once in a while and like, um, and like these posts and share, it is so helpful to find new readers for this incredible book. And I can see questions coming and some comments. I'll talk about that in just a second. Give me another minute more. I am Tam and Tam I am. I am known as the Cosmic Pretzel and I love what I do. I love my work with um, Oil Life. It's always a delight to be here with, um, with this group of people. And I want you to know that this episode of my work, the Cosmic Pretzel Energy Update is sponsored by the letters U and I. I am who I am because you are who you are. You and I are one. Thank you so much, Oil Life. This is the link. And I know that it's also in the chat box. I'd love for you to grab an energy almanac through Oil Life. Um, <clears throat> I do see questions. I'm going to pop, I'm going to end my share here. You can see my face again. There I am. Uh, and there's a lot of people on this call. I'm so happy and so grateful that you made it. Let's see. Now's the time for questions. So is your human design chart like a natal chart? Yes and no. Human design is a version of astrology. It does involve the planets, but it's like next level. You're, if you're just beginning with the two, if you if you haven't done natal or human design, pick one and run with it. Um, they both have extreme value. They both involve your innate soul wiring. Um, human design is a little more, it's a little more detailed, to be honest, but it's very, very good. Um, will the book be available on the Canadian site? I'm going to let Alyssa answer that. I am not certain of the answer. Karen is, you want to speak? Go right ahead, Alyssa. I saw you unmute yourself. Oh, no, you're good. I actually don't know off the top of my head. I would assume that it would be, but I can double check. Perfect. Awesome. So check back. Um, maybe you could drop a note to Oil Life support team or something and get the answer to that. Um, if Betty, if for some reason you can't get it through Oil Life, follow up with me later, but give Oil Life the opportunity. I know that in the past it has been available. Can I speak about crystals? So I'm not sure exactly, Karen, if you're still on the call, please ask me what you want to know about crystals. So this year, um, I hired an expert in gemstones. She's been working with gemstones since she was, I think, eight years old. Her name is Autumn Banks. Autumn does not have a website. She's a gemstone guru who has been living the life of gemstones here in Maine. She is a delight. She's in brilliant with gemstones. So she selects them according to their energy and matches it with whatever I predicted was coming up astrologically. There are two gemstones per month. I would love to direct everybody on this call to another sponsor of the Energy Almanac, and that is Crystal Joys, J-O-Y-S.com, crystaljoys.com. They have an incredible selection of gemstones that are beautifully curated and they match what is inside of our book. So if you have other questions about gemstones, you can write the question in more detail and I'll do my best. Marla says, thank you. And you're so welcome. Florence, you're welcome as well. Diana says she already bought the 2023 from Oil Life. Yay. I'm so happy to hear that. Please, everybody, um, if you get your almanac, do me a, a small favor. Help me out. Take a photo of yourself with your book tag at the energy almanac so everybody can see it and write why you love the book 
Also, um, if you're not comfortable showing your face on your Instagram account, put it next to your desk. Show me where you keep your book. It's always fun to see. Some people keep it in the kitchen. I keep mine on my desk. Um, some people keep it by the bedside. It's always fun to know where you keep your almanac. Um, Betty says she hasn't seen it there yet. Karen says it's great. Alona says, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Diana, you should also try to meet Dr. Christiane Northrup. She lives in Maine. She's also very tuned into energy work. She's the author who wrote Wisdom of Menopause. Diana, you will be pleased to know that I do know Dr. Northrup quite well. Um, she's uh, a, a good friend of my dad. And so, yeah, we, I do know Dr. Northrup and she has, she's had my book. So that's, thank you for saying that. Um, Ilona, my book is not on Kindle form. It is available as an, I'm using the word ebook. You know what? Hold off on that. It is going on to the platform, which is called uh, Draft to Digital. So it's going to be going all across all the different digital platforms. It probably is going to be available on Kindle. I would say by the end of the month, I know that my team was working on it this week. So I would say just watch a couple of weeks and you'll probably see that. Yep. You guys, it is eight, you gals and guys, um, it is 8.57. I'm here for three to five more minutes. Um, you can unmute yourself, say hello, say goodbye, tell me what you think about astrology. It's, it's just been a delight to be here. Alyssa, you have any questions or thoughts? I don't know if I have any questions, but I feel like this was absolutely amazing. I loved hearing about all of this. And for me, I'm still very much at the beginning of it. So I loved that you were able to introduce it all and kind of like help me to learn more about it and like what it means for me to have my sign and like how it affects the world too and everything around us. So oh, nice. Wonderful. Sure. Yes. In the book. This is great. You're welcome, Diana. I look forward to getting my hands on good Angela go get that book can we get a copy of the slides um boy oh boy how would I do that well if I can figure out how to do that I, can, <laughs> I mean if you want them I can do that for you uh you, I will tell you this though literally um when you get the energy almanac almost all the information is in there um oh uh I don't, I don't know if it's okay to mention this I am doing a two-hour dissertation breaking down 2023 um, coming up. That event is going to happen in the third week of December. Um, get on my newsletter, um, choosebigchange.com, and you can see all the events I do. I do online events like this all the time. That overview of 2023 is going to say specific, significant dates. It'll be exactly the style that you saw tonight, but in great detail. Um, and there'll be a lot more to it. And in that one, I'm going to have PDFs and things that you can download. That's going to be a really big, juicy, yummy, you want this for the year kind of information. Karen Joy, um, Mainer, high five. I'm going to do this. Boink. Um, yeah, I hope you get the almanac. And if, if I'm ever down your way, like I'll have to just ring you up. This is amazing. I love energy work, incorporating crystals, astrology. And I just followed you on Instagram. Thank you. Oh, yay. She just added to my 1 million collection. That's awesome. <laughs> Great. This is wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> One minute to go. I'm just hanging out for as long as you guys stay on this call. <laughs> so yeah. choosebigchange.com. Yes. www.choosebigchange.com. And that's, you'll get a 10% coupon um, when you sign up for my newsletter that you can use in my online store. And I have so many fun, yummy things, but nothing essential oils. You have to get all that through oil life. <laughs> all right. Yes. We love it. But I mean, if people, if you're okay with sending out your presentation, we can have people reach out to oil life, either through our Instagram or emailing support at oillife.com. And I will, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. If you're comfortable with it. I am. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I think I'm going to say good night to everybody from the coast of Maine, mid coast Maine. Um, have a beautiful evening. It has been um, a delight, a pure delight. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks again, everyone. It was.
This is so fun. Good. All right. Good night. Bye.